This is Diane Mapes from Red Hutch News. Um, I'm here today to talk with one of our experts on eating during stressful and uncertain times, like for instance, after a cancer diagnosis or when you're going through cancer treatment or right now when we're all going through a um, coronavirus pandemic. So I'm pleased to have Kate Uland with us here today. Kate is a dietitian at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. Um, that is the clinical care partner for Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And Kate also works within Dr. Heather Greenlee's lab at Fred Hutch. And today she's here to share some wonderful um, healthy eating tips with us. Kate also works with um, Dr. Greenlee on cookthroughlife.org, which is a website that was designed for uh, people who've been touched by cancer and that was recently acquired by Fred Hutch. So Kate, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your, your helpful advice on getting through these uncertain times. So we should probably jump right in. One question that I have seen come up again and again is, how do we keep our immune system healthy? Hi, Diane. Thanks so much for having me on to talk today. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, yes, there are many ways a person can support their immune system during these uncertain times. And one of the best ways to help support our immune system is to support our gastrointestinal tract, our GI tract. Um, about 60% of our uh, immune system is housed in our GI tract. And so it makes it just a really rich environment for protection. And one of the best ways to support your GI tract is to uh, feed it lots of fiber. And that means eating lots of plants, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, and we at Cook for Your Life um, support eating a mostly plant-based diet. And while that doesn't mean you have to eat vegan or go vegan, what that means is that most of the time you're eating plants in addition to some lean meats and dairy. It sounds like we need to reshape our plate. Um, I know that I've heard people talk about making sure that meat takes up no more or animal protein takes up no more than a quarter of your plate. Make sure your plate has at least half green veggies or even better, the rainbow of veggies. Can you talk a little bit about why it's important that we have this rainbow of color on our plates? Yeah, so the rainbow refers to the color in plants and the color comes from uh, these lovely little compounds called phytonutrients and phyto meaning plant comes from the Greek, Greek word phyto, plant-based nutrients. Um, what these are, these chemical compounds that the plants produce that are not vitamins or minerals, they're also called secondary compounds. And it's these secondary compounds that the plants produce that provide protection for the plants. And so when we consume these plants in all these varying different colors, we are getting that added extra protection that the, from eating these plants. And so a lot of these phytonutrients have been studied fairly extensively, although we're still working out the, our understanding and how these phytonutrients support us. But one of the, one of the kind of the leading theories is that they help support our antioxidant system and helping to reduce free radicals that accumulate in our bodies that lead then to different types of chronic diseases, cancer being one of those. And some of my favorite phytochemicals um, that I'd like to give a shout out to today are the indole 3 carbanol and the cruciferous vegetable family. Uh, those have been fairly extensively studied in um, cancer prevention. And there's um, the, the cruciferous vegetable family, they're also known as brassicas, and it's a whole host of um, kind of the mustardy family. So it's broccoli, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, to name a few. And another uh, 
phytonutrient that I'd like to call out are the lignans that are found in uh, ground flax seeds. They've also shown to have um, cancer preventative uh, benefits. And you can find these lignans in um, ground flax seeds. And they, which also help support or provide you with omega-3 fatty acids. I love, Kate, that you have favorite phytochemicals. Yeah. That, that is the best. I mean, what, what nutritionist, dietitian doesn't have favorite phytochemicals, but that's awesome. So other than, so fiber is extremely important for a number of different reasons. Um, when I think of fiber, primarily I think of fruits and vegetables, but also like grains and cereals. But there's a big difference in the range and the um, value of that, the, of what you find in grains and cereals. Can you talk a little bit about the difference in grains and cereals that are healthy for you and might provide healthy fiber and the ones that maybe are processed or had all the stuff leached out of them and in the importance of knowing the difference between those two. Yeah, I would say the simplest way to ensure that you're getting all the fiber benefits in all the plants, the different different types of plants that we consume, is to eat them in the most whole form possible. And so if you're talking about fruits and vegetables, you know, keeping the skins on when possible, um, you know, not peeling carrots, not peeling potatoes, not peeling beets. Um, those are some really common vegetables that people really like to peel. And there's just no need to really peel them. And you get a lot of the vitamins and minerals are in that layer between the skin and the fleshy part of the vegetable. And so by retaining that peel, you retain those vitamins and minerals in addition to the fiber that you're consuming. And in terms of grains and cereals, just eating those in the whole, most whole fo food form that you can possibly consume them in. And that looks like whole grains, like brown rice versus white rice, uh, quinoa, farro, wheat berry, those are all really good sources of whole grains. Consuming uh, rolled oats versus instant oats is another way to uh, distinguish between something that's been a little more processed than, th it, than it being in its whole form. That is fascinating about what you can retain as far as nutritional value in fruits and vegetables just by not peeling them. That is such a great tip as far as, you know, keeping your immune system healthy and getting all the um, great nutrients out of real whole food as opposed to fake processed food. I know that with this pandemic, and the same thing happened with cancer treatment for me too, is that I needed comfort. And so right now I am consuming a lot of what I would call comfort calories. And a lot of it is in the form of these processed chips or processed crackers or that sort of thing. And I've even done a little bit of baking at home as many of us are doing right now. I have not done the sourdough starter or the sourdough bread, but I've picked up a couple packages of muffin mixes and I'm thinking that's probably not the best way to bake at home. Should we even be baking at home or is there a way to do it and have it still be good and nutritious and healthy for us? I support people baking at home. I think it's a lovely way to control uh, what is going into the foods that we're eating and consuming. And so, you know, if you're able to cook from scratch as much as possible, that would be my recommendation. And the baking especially, and we have some really good uh, muffin, and bread like banana breads and zucchini breads on our cook for your life website that are made with whole 100% whole wheat flour you can add carrots to muffins to make them sweet so you don't have to add as much refined sugar you can add um, you can keep the peels on your carrots that's okay because you can just shred them in that and if you have the peels on you're never gonna nobody's ever gonna know I promise um, and the same thing with carrot, uh, apples and things like that. Um, you can add blueberries and 
and bananas and, and raspberries and strawberries into baked goods to help increase the phyto the phytonutrient composition of the the muffins and then one of my favorite things to do that I do with all baked goods that I make at home is I always add ground flaxseed into whatever I'm cooking and I never change the I never change the recipe to account for the the flaxseed that I add in and I do that for two reasons one because it helps to increase the fiber content of the the product that I'm or the baked goods that I'm cooking and two, it helps to provide that extra little boost of omega-3 fatty acids, which we know help to support a healthy immune system. That's awesome. That's, that's great. You're, you're making me hungry, Kate. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, let's talk about nutritious home-baked breads. Um, the thing about cooking at home is I totally agree. You can have control of the ingredients, you can have control of how much sugar and fat and, and how much you eat and all of that, much more than if you go out into restaurants. And now restaurants are opening back up again. And it's, um, it's this balance because it's so healthy to cook at home and have that control. You don't, restaurants, you know, we know we love their food, but they can add a lot of extra fat and salt and calories that way. But cooking at home can be super time consuming. And I'm thinking of people who are trying to homeschool their kids, work full time, get their grocery shopping done. And then like, you know, how do you find the time to cook at home realistically? And even for people who are like going through treatment right now, you know, they may not have the energy to chop a bunch of vegetables or, you know, what, what are some tips with this? Yeah, so a couple of things. So, you know, if you're at home with kids and I always, I have kids at home too, I always encourage people to engage their children in the cooking process as early as possible because uh, having that connection to food uh, is going to just create good, healthy eaters into the future. And so, you know, maybe you don't give your kids a sharp knife to chop vegetables, but you can like bring them into the kitchen and and connect with them and and have discussions about what you're preparing and what you're cooking, and that is allows you to be in the kitchen and prepping food while engaging your children at the same time. The another thing that I recommend uh, people do is to just you have to allocate time at some point to prepare food. And so some some people find that it's easy to just carve out a couple of hours out, out of their day to just prep veggies. And you just allocate that time and you say, okay, on Monday afternoon, I'm going to spend two hours just chopping and prepping veggies so that I can be set up for success later in the week. And during that prepping of your veggies where you're just chop, chop, chopping away, you can be cooking a whole grain, right? You can be cooking some beans on the stove if you want to allocate that time. And you're kind of, you're doing a couple of things at once to kind of set yourself up for the, for later in the week when you do have a really stressful, busy, long day homeschooling or entertaining your kids during summer break where you just don't have the mental capacity to, you know, throw together a brand new recipe, but you took that time to put quinoa in your refrigerator and beans in your refrigerator and you chopped these veggies and you could add, you know, you put them all in a bowl together and then you could add like a fried egg on top if you consume meat or you you can bake a chicken and throw some chicken strips on top. You can bake tofu and throw some tofu on top. All these things can result in like a like 10 minutes and then you have dinner. If you set aside a couple of hours during the week and you know do that once a week Mm -hmm. and see how it goes with people just to kind of start to get into the groove of doing that. I know that um, we try, I try to avoid canned and packaged and processed foods as much as I possibly can. I try to keep from shopping in the middle of the grocery store and I'm much more probably better about shopping around the edge where you find produce and um, that sort of thing. But are there ways that we can tweak packaged foods so they're not so unhealthy? Is there 
any any tips you have there? Because sometimes time can, you know, time wise, you just don't have time to cook beans or something. Yeah, you can buy like buying canned beans is a lovely way to keep um, some good healthy plant based proteins in the house. I always encourage people to kind of keep the variety of beans stocked in your pantry, at least like have a couple different cans of each different type of beans that you like to consume kind of on hand and ready to go. I always encourage people to rinse them just really, really well. You want to rinse beans until the water runs clear to make sure that you're just kind of getting all the extra salt and whatever else they're using to keep those beans in a can for that long. Um, kind of rinsed off the beans and then they're ready to go. If you have a can of red sauce and you don't have a lot of time to cook dinner, you can always just saute some onions and garlic for a couple of minutes and then chop up some carrots, uh, diced carrots kind of pretty fine and you can add that into the mix. It will help sweeten the sauce and it'll also, especially if you're not peeling your carrots, will give you lots of fiber and it'll give you those carotenoids. Another thing I like to do in addition to the carrots and onions to make it more nutrient dense is to take a bunch of kale and uh, de-stem them and then chop it like you would chop an herb. So really, really fine. So it almost looks like you're just adding another herb into your pasta sauce. And that will give you even more phytonutrients and help to increase that nutrient density of your store-bought pasta sauce pretty quickly. And it's just having these vegetables on hand also help to kind of inspire people to make things that are pre-packaged more nutrient dense by just making a couple of adjustments and additions to the meal. Sure, these are really wonderful tips. I, I know that, um, I know you're not a psychologist, but I, I do think that a lot of this is just about, um, you have to do a lot of self-talk at a time like this. It seems like we have to be a little bit extra kind to ourselves during these times. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, t I do this with my cancer patients all the time as well, is you really, at the beginning of all of it, whether you've just received a cancer diagnosis or you're, you've just like gotten your, your um, no evidence of disease and you're like full on survivorship or you're all of a sudden at home with COVID and you can't get out to the stores and you can't grocery shop like you once were able to, the very first thing that I always recommend to people is you just have to be kind to yourself. You have to give yourself a little bit of grace during these times. And to remember that this is, you know, this is not forever. This is a moment in time. And sometimes we need to just have a box of cookies or have a couple of cookies from a box of cookies and that's okay. And, and the big picture here is that most of the time, people are eating mostly plants. And if we're doing that and we're giving ourselves a little bit of grace, then that ha then we allow ourselves room for the occasional cookie or the occasional muffin or the occasional whatever X is that you want to insert in that space. And so the conversation that I'm always having with my patients and with people out in the community is that I try to shift the conversation to what can we include in our diets as opposed to what can we take away from our diets. And one of the ways to do that, like with my pasta sauce example, is you're going to be eating jarred pasta sauce. What can we add to it? Right? So you're also just being kind to yourself that maybe you just think about buying a little more fruits and vegetables throughout the week and trying to explore with them in addition to what you're already doing. And so it's always what can we add in versus what can we take away. These are such great, great tips. Kate, thank you so much for joining us. If anyone is interested in looking up recipes um, at um, the website, it's cookforyourlife.org. Kate Euland, thank you again. Um, Kate is a dietitian at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which is Fred Hutchinson's um, 
cancer or clinical care partner and she was kind enough to join us today to offer some tips on eating in uncertain times. This is Diane Mapes with Red Hutch News. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, Diane.